We got this first news story coming from Polygon, written by Michael McWhorter over there. Beloved TMNT graphic novel, The Last Ronin, is becoming a video game. That's right. A very a new, very different style of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game is currently in development, an adaptation of The Last Ronin, the 2020 graphic novel that told a grim, futuristic story about the turtles. Like the comic, The Last Ronin video game adaptation will be a darker, more mature take on the typically colorful Ninja Turtles, according to Doug Rosen, Senior Vice President for Games and Emerging Media at Paramount Global, the rights holders for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In an interview with Polygon last week, Rosen likened the upcoming third-person action role-playing game to Sony's recent God of War titles and said it will be authentic to the story of the last Ronin arc, which is set in a future where only one of the turtles has survived. While other TMNT games like last year's Shredder's Revenge are typically about playing as all four turtles and sometimes their allies Splinter, April O'Neil, and Casey Jones, the last Ronin will be a primarily a single-character game. Though Rosen posited that other characters could be playable in flashback sequences similar to how the comic series plays out, the primary action is said to center on the only surviving turtle. The identity of that lone remaining Ninja Turtle was something of a mystery when the last Ronin comic series was announced. The arc story was built around a Ninja Turtle who wore a black mask and fought using all four turtles' signature weapons. Nunchaku, Sai, Bow, Staff, and Dual Katanas. It wasn't until the final pages of the first issue of the last Don't spoil it if they, were, if they say it. They are about to say it, and they do say it, so I will not spoil it. Uh, <laughs> the remaining turtles, Master Splinter, have all been exterminated. Blah, blah. This is just going to go. I'm not going to carry on because it's just spoiling the whole thing. But yeah. So go read it. But there's a new video game coming out. Um, like the last Ronin comic book series, a video game will target an older audience, just like the recent collaboration with Call of Duty that brings Shredder to Activision shooter franchise. Is that true? Is Shredder in Call of Duty? I have no idea. I need to read. Oh my gosh. Call of Duty is getting a Ninja Turtles crossover. Is this the new it's story? Not enough. It's we're, not we're, enough. We're, we're, <laughs> we're not talking about this. We're, we're not talking about last Ronin anymore. We're talking about how Shredder is in coming to call it call, coming to Warzone oh. Battle Royale spinoff. Can what we get the, the turtles in Fortnite already? What's going on? What's taking so long? It does feel kind of weird that they're not in Fortnite right now, considering that they, right? that Fortnite Epic tends to grab every available IP that's like cool or hip or of the moment and, you know, brings it into the game. So it is kind of weird that the turtles haven't been involved already. Man, they're perfect yeah. for that. For that. Yeah, I'm really uh, excited about this because I'm a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans from the early '90s. I absolutely loved the comic book, and I loved loved the cartoon, and of course the uh, the original game on the Nintendo Entertainment System was one of my favorite games of all time, and still very playable, <laughs> like very playable. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, growing up, growing up, I wasn't, I, I, you know, the cartoon would come on, I'd watch it. I was never like super duper into it, but like when it came on, I'm like, oh, sick. Okay. It, you know, if I happen to stumble upon it, I'm like, heck yeah, I'm watching this. Uh, but like playing Shredder's Revenge last year, like that game was so good. It was like, that was so much year, fun. Man. So much fun playing that. We did like the full, like what, four or five players or whatever Six we did. Six man lobby. So, yeah, with uh, the Super MPC radio guys, that was fantastic. Um, I, I'm really stoked about this. I, like, just honestly, just seeing the art, because so on on all the articles, they pretty much use the same image, and it's an image from the the graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that art, I'm like, oh yeah, of course I'm in. Like that looks incredible. Like if I, if there was a game, in that aesthetic. I am in, and especially as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this sounds absolutely sick. So, and Adrian, you recommended that I need to go read that that run before the show, and I was like, as okay, soon as yeah. possible, as I'm soon gonna... as possible, dude. Uh, I, I I am alongside JJ. I'm a massive Turtles fan. I've watched pretty much every iteration that's come out. I've seen the movies. I had Ninja Turtles bed sheets and covers back when I was a youngin. Like I'm all about them. So. When I found out that they were going to actually do, they're going to adapt this arc, I almost jumped out of my chair because of how I, I can see in my head how this game would play out. And I feel like I don't want anybody else to make this game except for maybe a couple of studios. 
Rocksteady being the first one, because they should have made this the entire time old, instead old of Rocksteady. Suicide Squad. Old Rocksteady, yes. <laughs> this should have been the game that they were making, not Suicide Squad. Either them or, I mean, why not have uh, Sony Santa Monica do it? Yes. They already have yeah. the, the tools in place. They have the team in place. They've shown they can do it. Yeah. But I Who really, I think I really right would now, want though. Hmm? Who owns the turtle IP? Uh, Is it Paramount it owns the movie rights and the game rights. It's it's, it's like and, a, 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 yeah. a, a it was like Paramount Global owns right. the rights for yeah m any uh, games and emerging media. It's called so yeah. Uh, movie, Nickelodeon show, owns anyway. animation rights. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I would love 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 if somehow you know Suicide Squad crashes and burns that this is what they use to to pick up the pieces and get back to the rock city we know and love because i i really feel like they would have knocked this out of the park yeah and that, see that... i i feel like uh, sorry to interrupt you garrett but i feel like um I feel like santa monica would do a better job with this game i know i know I... you're you're thinking the batman uh games that rocksteady did so well um mm -hmm. but i'm i'm seeing like miles morales and the original spider-man game that santa monica did and i'm like Man, Insomniac. I just feel like you're thinking Insomniac. Why am I thinking Insomniac? Okay, I'm thinking They're the Insomniac. Ones that made I apologize. It. So I'm thinking if Insomniac did it, it would be fantastic. I could see that I too. Would, I yeah. would really love to see Insomniac do it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it, it is interesting. Yeah, it, it, if you didn't notice, like in this article, they don't mention a studio at all. So it's just like it's crazy that they're like developing a game without. A developer but they're doing it they're, they're like get, at least getting like the writing i'm sure going and stuff like that and trying to figure out the direction um but, i think this uh, was to gauge interest yeah which i mean it's been blowing up like people are stoked out of their minds so are i think that kidding? answers that answers their question <clears throat> um yeah i think i'm right there with you like i i yeah if anyone i i would i wish it was rock city i really hope it's rock city because just again, looking at what images I've looked up, like just from a quick Google search of last Ronin, in, uh, in like the images everyone's been using in the in the news articles, it's like it very much reminds me of that just heavy Batman feel like still agile, but just like there's weight behind it. And that's what, mm -hmm. what the rock what that's what the Arkham games had originally, like, you know, like the uh, Arkham, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, stuff like that. Like the combat was fl both fluid, but also had weight and heaviness to it. And I was like, oh man, like looking at the character that 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 that's in in those the graphic novel, if that's what they're if they're gonna do, do with kind of like a one to one recreation. I'm like, oh yeah, he looks like he should feel the same way Bel Batman felt in those original Rock City games. So if they could yes, do something dude. like that, man, like combat would be so sick. Um, and like with Arkham City and stuff like that, they like they showed they can do a full city, like an open world, like oh, yeah. run around. Um, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, if old old Rocksteady could come on back and uh, pick up the mantle and just like kill it with uh, this, oh, it'd be. Sick. Imagine if this was that. Remember they there was a rumor going around that they were apparently like talking about before. I guess they started development on Suicide Squad that they were working on a Turtles game. If it yeah, would have been. A, yeah, there's a lot of rumors, but yeah, I do remember that the Turtles game, like that. It, ah, man, can you how, guys how did, how did they end up with Suicide Squad? How did they end up on WB? That? What'd you say, JJ? Can you guys put your finger on where Rocksteady went wrong? What it was in there, in since from the Arkham games to now, like what changed? Is it the person running? I don't Rocksteady think it was Rocksteady. That... I think it was WB. Um, I think WB like any other major publisher of AAA games is just trying to make sure that they make a profit first. And the one thing that, you know, the one thought process, which now we've shown that is an error uh, that people think is going to make a lot of money is a live service game. And as we've seen in the, in the, in the past few weeks, they've been dying off, dropping like flies. So I feel like the live service genre outside of maybe a couple of big games is getting ready to uh, dry up here. And unfortunately, Suicide Squad is probably going to be another casualty of that. So it's most likely a directive from WB because this feels like, especially because it's set in Metropolis, it feels like it wanted to be a Superman, a Superman game. 
and then they were told no it's got to be multiplayer and mm. they shifted over to to suicide squad yeah because that was one of the rumors too there was the rumor of turtles game a superman game and possibly a wonder woman game it was like it was like okay which one of those three is it going to be and i mean none of them but yeah right. you're right you're right the fact that it's like takes place in metropolis and not like anywhere else i don't know it could have been like a worldwide thing a justice league it could have been like uh uh or in gotham or yeah literally anywhere and it's like okay it's in metropolis and it's like there's some weird things like oh i wonder if it was going to be superman <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> an interesting thought like that, that you brought up there like oh yeah it could have been superman and they just switched it because ultimately yeah wb is the one holding the license so they dictate kind of what, what rock city is going to be able to do really um but the only the other reason I would think Rock City should do this as well is because I imagine it's going to be multi platform. Where if it's Insomniac or Santa Monica, it that makes it PlayStation exclusive. And I don't. I mean, I'm, PlayStation has the money to do that, but I don't think Paramount. No, they would don't, want to Garrett. Them. Remember, they said they don't have any resources. They right, can't make right, any games. They don't. They don't have any exclusives. Uh, they. They're just a you're small right. independent development company and publisher. <laughs> I for, I forgot. Yeah, you're yeah. right. They did say that. They did say that. Uh, and that Microsoft was going to take over the world if they Yeah, got they don't Activision. have any money yeah. to make games exclusive. <laughs> what? So stupid. Didn't you hear Jim Ryan? He's just said uh, this, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, Jim Ryan's a big dumb-dumb. I'll go ahead and say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but... I, I, I can't see Paramount being willing to lose out on that money. Absolutely like, not. So like I, I could see PlayStation trying being like, hey, here's here's a bid. Here's a bid. Here's a bid. And them just being like, no, we're going to make a crap ton of money putting it on everything. So um, that's why I think Rocksteady would have to do it because, it you know, then it could be multi-platform. Otherwise, it's locked to PlayStation. So but we will see. We don't know much more. Uh, also. I have the Amazon page up for Last Ronin. It's 1969 for the hardcover, or apparently it's free if you have Comixology, Kindle Unlimited. I don't have oh, Kindle Unlimited. Oh, if you have Prime, then you should have it. Oh, really? I think so. Oh. Dude, I do have Prime. Sick. Maybe I can read it for free. All right. Cool. I mean, it's worth and, the money, but if you can get yeah. it for free, even better. It's also 10 bucks on Kindle just to buy it, too. That's right. not bad a price. And I can read on my iPad. All right. Anyways, you guys don't care about that. Thank you so much for watching that clip from our podcast. Remember, if you want to watch the whole episode, the full episode, link will be in the description below. You can click on that and uh, check it out. We got listener questions. We got more news segments. We got uh, what you're playing. We got a lot of fun things. So yeah, more than just the news. There's a little more, a lot more to the show that you should go check out. So remember, click that link in the description. Check out that full episode.